Okay, hello guys. Uh, we're going to be solving today some problems on chapter 5, which is just read body equilibrium uh, and support. So basically, we're, we're going to be doing the same thing that we did in the previous chapter. Uh, the difference or the main difference is now we have the support reactions that we have to calculate and in the other case it was just equilibrium plain and simple equilibrium so let's check out this problem it says determine the tension in the cable and tension in the cable and the horizontal and vertical component of reaction of pins a, uh, of the pin a the pulley at d is frictionless that's very important here frictionless and the cylinder weights uh, 80 pounds this is really important because uh, and this is something that you have to remember I stress out this a lot during class but you have to remember if this pulley is frictionless that means that this tension and this tension are gonna have the same value the same magnitude different direction yes I know that's obvious but it's gonna be the same value so how are we gonna proceed for solving this type of problems. The first thing that we have to do is create a free body diagram. Remember when we did particle equilibrium you create a free body diagram around the particle. When you do free body equilibrium, rigid body equilibrium, and that's important, rigid body equilibrium, uh, what we do is that we do an isolation of the body that we are doing the equilibrium, basically that one. And then we start putting all the forces that no known forces and unknown forces that apply here. The first thing that we know is this value here is tension. We don't know the magnitude but we know this is tension and we know this is the same tension also. Why? Once again because it's a frictionless pulley. So I'm going to call this T and T here. The second thing, even if it doesn't say that this is a pin and then we have to calculate the horizontal and vertical components, don't get used to that. This is basically a spoon feeding you. I don't want you to get a spoon fed. So if this is a pin, remember it produces one reaction with a known line of action that you can convert in two reactions. The easiest way for uh, setting up this problem uh, will be one vertical reaction that we're gonna call AY and one horizontal reaction that we're gonna call AX. And on top of that those are two unknowns, these are unknowns also, but on top of that we have a force acting here which is the weight of the cylinder and is 80 pounds. Anything else that we know? Well, this bar here should have a weight, but the fact that it's not mentioned anywhere makes me think that it's negligible because even they mentioned this force that is 80 pounds which is not a very large force and they don't mention the weight of this bar if the weight of the bar is mentioned or given remember that you have to include that also as a weight as a force and it should be uh, basically at the center of gravity of that bar which if the bar is or homogeneous and the same cross-sectional area should be at the center but in this case we don't have it so this is all that we have second thing we have to start setting up our problem remember once again we're working with a 2d and we're working with rigid body equilibrium that means that we have three equations that we can use or three equations of equilibrium as most of the book text, textbooks call them. Uh, those three equations of equilibrium are summation of forces in X equals zero, summation of forces in Y equals zero, and this is not necessarily X and Y, once again remember I'm just doing it because it's easier for us in this case use X and Y, it could be in any direction of any axis, always has to be like that summation of moments which obviously if you're working with x and y it would be around z but i'm not going to copy z here it has to be zeros if we have three equation of equilibrium that means that for that uh, object to be statically determinate remember statically 
determinate or also called isostatic for this element to be isostatic or statically determinate I have to have a maximum of three unknowns which is what I have one two and three because those two are only one unknown that means that yes this uh, structure is statically determinate or isostatic and we can start working with it out of the three equations that I have summation of forces in X summation of forces in Y and summation of moments think if I use summation of forces in X I'm gonna have this and this component which basically gives me anything if I do summation of forces in Y I'm gonna have this and this component which gives me anything just one equation uh, give me nothing so I'm gonna start by doing summation of moments and let's think about that if I do moment about B for example then this AX is not gonna produce any any moment because it's passing through the point but this vertical component of T and this AY yes are producing moments so that means that I have two unknowns the best point for uh, doing moments here is around the point A because at the same time I eliminate these two uh, reactions from that equation and my only unknown would be T so in only one equation I could calculate uh, one of the unknowns so let's do summation of moments about A make this equal zero and I'm assuming that counterclockwise direction is positive why we do that again at point A because it eliminates AX and AY now be careful with that because once again the fact that this distance this thickness here is not given the width this part is not given what it's telling you is basically this force and this force are acting at that point but if you have that distance it's going to be a little bit different because this force will be applied there but the horizontal component will be applied here and that horizontal component will produce a moment with respect to this point be careful with that distance that's going to make a difference in certain problems so so far for this one which I don't agree with this drawing I will put the, the just the hook right there and the hook right there to make the problem correct then we can calculate or we can express this vertical component the vertical component of this tension is going to be 2 and this is 1 so this uh, completing this triangle this is going to be a square root of 5 because it's going to be a square root of this this square plus this square so and the vertical component here is going to be 2 divided by the square root of 5 multiplied by t and the horizontal component of this is going to be 1 divided by the square root of 5 multiplied by t once we have that we can proceed the first force that I found is this t force is vertical t distance has to be horizontal 5 and if I apply this in this direction my moment is going to be acting in this direction and that direction according to my convention is positive let's go to this vertical component again the vertical component of the force is 2 divided by a square root of 5 t that's the vertical force multiplied by the horizontal component which is uh, the horizontal distance which is 10 once again the direction if I push it or pull it in this direction the moment is going to be acting counterclockwise so that's going to be also positive this is the part that I want to you to pay attention here look this is the thickness of the beam this, I'm exaggerating this the point A is here the force is acting here this is the point A this is this point that means that the component the vertical component is this and the horizontal component should be this one here 
If this thickness is representative or is given somehow, the vertical component, of course, the horizontal distance is going to be this, which is the one that we are doing there. But the horizontal component, which is this one, is also producing a moment multiplied by this distance because the point A is exactly here at the center. Be careful with that because that is producing also a counterclockwise moment. What happened in this particular problem is that it makes you or it leads you to think that this is negligible. And basically this is not acting here as I draw it, but it will be acting here. Right there. So this distance is non-existent. If that is the case, we have the vertical component and the horizontal component here. And that horizontal component passes through the point A, meaning there's not going to be any moment in that in that, uh, that force is not producing any moment with respect to the point A. That's what it, that's what it will do. Now, uh, so this force is passing through that, but it, there, there can be situations that actually is applied here, and you have this thickness, this width, no, this distance. For, that's what I'm saying. So be careful with that. So we have this force and this force. The last one is this one, which is going to be 80. The force and the distance has to be horizontal, meaning it's 13. Now, if I apply this in this direction, that's negative because it's counterclockwise. It's acting, it's clockwise. It's acting in this direction, and that has to be equal to zero. Solving for t because the only unknown here is t. You can put this in numbers at these two, pass this to the other side, and pass the value dividend. Then you get a value for t of 74.583 pounds. First, done. Second, we have the tension. What else do we need? Well, we need the summation, of, we need the calculation of the reactions here AX and AY. Well, for calculating AX, we do summation of forces in X must be zero. If summation of forces in X must be zero, then I have AX. And the horizontal component of the tension, remember, don't get confused. I say that horizontal component doesn't produce any moment at the point A, but the forces are there. The force exists. And the component is one-fifth of t, 1 divided by square root of 5t, and it's going to the left. And that has to be 0. Because I know t, I just plugged t into there, and I can solve for Ax, which is equal to 33.354 pounds. Always box, box your answers and always put your units. That's very important. Last summation of forces in y equals zero. Then we have Ay plus t plus this component of t which is 2 divided by the square root of 5t minus 80 equals zero. And remember we know t so we can plug t into this and then we get that Ay equal negative 61.292 pounds. And I know that when you are solving this and you are in a rush, because you do it with a calculator and you don't go step by step, you see this negative value, and probably you are doing it everything in this side, and then the value is going to be positive, and you don't you forget to pass it to the other side as negative. This is negative, and this negative sign here has has implications. What are the implications of finding a negative value in any of the forces that we are calculating? Well, actually, finding a negative value, what it means is that we assume the value, uh, the direction of that force incorrectly. We said that that force should be pointing to the right when the negative value is telling me that the direction, the real direction of that force has to be not to the left, well, to the left in this case, but not to the left, but that negative value means 
that whatever direction I assume here, the real direction is going to be opposite. What does that mean? That means that if by any chance I assume originally this going to the left and I get a negative value, the negative value doesn't mean to the left. That means opposite to whatever I assume. In that case, it would be to the right. But in this problem, if I assume it to the left originally, well, this will be positive here, right? That means that my result will be, I mean, this here will be negative, negative, and my result at the end, this here will be negative, I'm sorry, erase that part. This here will be negative, is the only difference, and this will keep the same sign, and then this is negative, then I pass it to the other side as positive, and this sign will be positive, because the original direction that I assumed was to the left. But this is not the case. I assume to the right, that's why I get the negative sign. That means that you have to. And at the end, you have to, oh, I'm sorry, this is wrong. This part is, uh, I'm working with uh, AX. No, AX is correct. This is not the direction. The direction is here. Okay. Give me a second. Okay. So what this means, basically, what this means, this negative sign means that uh, the has really real implications in the solution of this problem because that that sign means that whatever I assume I assume it pointing up a y and a y is not gonna go up a y is gonna go in the opposite direction which in this problem will be pointing down that means that the correct direction for a y is gonna be pointing down that's what the negative sign means Okay, uh, I'm going to leave this problem here. I'm going to solve another problem for you in, in, the, in the next video. Have a good day.